As much as we love this show, they seem to have a hard time getting their story straight. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Friends plot inconsistencies we can't unsee. Evolution is scientific fact, like, like, like the air we breathe, like gravity. Oh, okay, don't get me started on gravity. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at parts of the Friends narrative that just don't add up. Hey, you have a boyfriend? No. But if some guy who looks like Corey Haim wants to kiss me tonight, I'm so gonna let him. Number 10. Phoebe's Knowledge of French Phoebe is easily the most mysterious member of the Friends gang, with information being revealed about her throughout the series that no one could have seen coming. You don't think I would have defended myself against a 14-year-old? Give me your money, punk. Oh my god, it was you! <laughs> One of the things that isn't consistent, though, is whether Phoebe can actually speak a second language. In a season 8 episode, Phoebe meets one of Monica's new cooks. Monica calls him a sous chef, and Phoebe is clearly at a loss as to what that means. Uh, uh, Tim, this is Phoebe. Phoebe, this is Tim, my new sous chef. Oh. So you're Monica's boss? Ac actually, she's my boss. Sous is, is French for under. Ah! Oh. I sue stand. <laughs> Two seasons later, though, she spends an entire episode teaching Joey how to speak French and appears to be totally fluent. J'accuse, Phoebe. Je m'appelle Claude. Je te coupe plow. <laughs> Number nine, Chandler's ability to cry. You didn't cry when Bambi's mother died? Yes, it was very sad when the guy stopped drawing the deer. <laughs> In a season six episode titled The One Where Chandler Can't Cry, the friends realize that no matter what they do, they cannot make Chandler cry. The entire plot of this story revolves around the fact that Mr. Bing never sheds a tear. It's a funny concept, but real fans of the show remember several earlier instances where Chandler did in fact cry. I get to choose my best man. I want both you guys. The most notable is in the episode where Ross is trying to decide who his best man is. He gives Joey and Chandler an emotional speech about how much their friendship means to him, and both guys start tearing up. What a baby. Total wuss. <laughs> Number eight, the mysterious door locks. Got the keys? Okay. The nature of the locks on the door of Monica's apartment seemed to change liberally throughout the series. In a season one episode, the gang is memorably locked out of the apartment while cooking Thanksgiving dinner. In this plot line, the door seems to lock automatically. But if that were the case, how does everyone come and go so easily all the time? The most unbelievable thing has happened. Underdog has gotten away. In season 10, in another Thanksgiving episode, Monica and Chandler lock everyone out of their apartment to make a point. But Rachel digs up an old key that can unlock the door. Thing is, the locks on the apartment were changed in season eight, after Rachel moved out. Oh my God, what happened to the door? So it's noticeable, huh? <laughs> Number seven, the curious case of Ben. <laughs> after Ross's son Ben is born at the end of the show's first season, he remains a fixture in the gang's lives for several seasons. In later years, though, Ben's appearances diminish, and eventually he seems to just completely disappear. He's notably missing from Ross's wedding to Emily, which admittedly was on another continent, but his grandparents surely could have taken him. His final episode is midway through season eight, which leaves over two seasons with no Ben sightings at all. Sadly, we never once see him meet his little sister, Emma. Phoebe! <laughs> number six, the number of Tribbiani sisters. <laughs> we know that Joey comes from a large family with an abundance of sisters, but there seems to be a disconnect about how many sisters he actually has. In a memorable episode from the third season, Chandler gets drunk and hooks up with one of Joey's sisters, but can't remember which one. Was it Gina? Which one is Gina? The dark. Big hair with the airplane earrings. No, 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 that's not Gina, that's Dina. Oh. You see, you can't tell which is which either. <laughs> in that episode, there are seven daughters in the Tribbiani family. In season one, however, Joey talks about his mother giving birth to seven children. Seems even he can't remember how many siblings he has. To be fair though, we could chalk this one up to Joey's poor addition skills. 
I'll have you know that Gloria Tribbiani was a handsome woman in her day, all right? You think it's easy giving birth to seven children? Number five, the apartment numbers change. Paul, this is everybody. Everybody, this is Paul. Hey, hey Paul. Paul. In the earliest episodes of the show, Monica lives in apartment number five of their building, while Joey and Chandler live in apartment four. As soon as season two, however, the number on the door of Monica's place changes to 20, while the guy's apartment becomes 19. We're still going to the game, right? Yeah. yeah. The reason behind this, according to some sources, is that the show creators realized that based on the floor they lived on, it would be unrealistic for the numbers to be so low. Their decision to change them, however, arguably just confused things even more. But listen, don't ring the buzzer for 19. Ring 20. Geller Green, they'll let you in, okay? Number four, Rachel's history of kissing women. Okay, if, if you say that you kissed Melissa, then you kissed Melissa. Thank you, Phoebe. Okay. She didn't. No, I know. <laughs> In season seven, Melissa, an old friend of Rachel's, comes to visit, and Rachel claims that the two kissed once back in college. Phoebe refuses to believe her, assuming Rachel is way too much of a prude to kiss a girl. The thing is, though, Rachel already has kissed a girl. Okay, so if you don't remember that, maybe you will remember this. <laughs> After Monica and Rachel lose their apartment to the guys in season four, they're willing to do anything to get it back. The only thing that eventually persuades them is when they offer to kiss for one minute and let the boys watch. Considering Phoebe was sitting in the background of this scene, it seems implausible that she wouldn't believe Rachel later on. Totally worth it. That was one good minute. Good night. Good night. Number three, Rachel and Chandler's memories. I am so not gonna do good on my SATs tomorrow. <laughs> In the first episode of the show, Rachel shows up at Central Perk in her bridal gown after running out on her own wedding. Monica introduces her to the rest of the gang, including Chandler, and they greet one another like strangers. Okay, everybody, this is Rachel, and another Lincoln High survivor. This, this is everybody. This is Chandler and, and Phoebe and Joey. And you remember my brother, Ross? Later in the show, however, it's revealed that Rachel and Chandler have actually already met on more than one occasion. In the one with all the Thanksgivings, we see a flashback to Chandler coming to the Gellers for Thanksgiving a couple of years in a row. He and Rachel have several interactions, including one that we don't think he'd forget. Hey! I'm in college and I'm in a band. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Number two, permanent marker. When Ross and Rachel fly to Las Vegas together, they engage in an escalating prank battle that quickly gets out of hand. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Excellent. <laughs> when Rachel falls asleep on the plane, Ross draws all over her face with permanent marker. After she finally notices it, she realizes that try as she might, there's nothing she can do to get it off. It won't come off. What? It won't come off. Oh my God, R Rachel, are, are you sure? As a compromise, Ross lets her draw on his face as well. The two get drunk that night and end up tying the knot. The next morning, however, the markings are magically gone, though mere hours before it had been impossible to remove. What? Are we gonna talk about what you guys did last night, or? <laughs> before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Uh, Joey, women don't have Adam samples. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are messing with me, right? Would you put that back on? Monica's gonna be here any minute. But it hurts my Joey's apple. <laughs> it's like Ross not liking ice cream. You don't like ice cream? It's too cold! <laughs> Number one, the gang's totally inconsistent ages. The most wide-ranging flaw in the Friends narrative is the fact that people's ages and birthdays seem totally random and unfixed. Rachel? Yeah. When's your birthday? May 5th. Why? Oh, I, I, I'm just making a list of people's birthdays. Oh, mine's December. Yeah, whatever. 
Throughout the series, several characters give different dates for their birthdays. And for three entire seasons, Ross claims to be 29 years old, despite the seasons changing and time clearly passing. What are you doing? Making chocolate milk. You want some? No thanks, I'm 29. <laughs> In the season 7 episode, the one where they all turn 30, we see flashbacks to everyone else's birthdays when Rachel, allegedly the youngest of the bunch, celebrates hers. Earlier, though, it's said that Joey is actually the youngest. There seems to be no rhyme nor reason to the logic behind this one. Yeah, I'm single. <laughs> 25. An actor. Hello? <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.